and this is quite typical of people who don't actually know what they are uh, dealing with, right? They they read something and it sounds good and it and it fits with what they are trying to say, so they take they take a hold of it. Uh, there, what he's referring to here in both cases, there's two specific things I want to pull out here. One he talks about vibrational states, and the other he talks about five D. He's referring to five dimensions. Now, in, in a sort of simplified version of string theory, there are 10 dimensions, but they start at uh, the zero dimension. Uh, the quickest way to describe this is, <coughs> excuse me, the zero dimension is a point. The first dimension is a straight line. The second dimension is obviously a flat plane. The third dimension is what we see around us, of course. And the fourth dimension is a straight line. The fifth dimension is a flat plane. And the sixth dimension is a three-dimensional fold in space. And then seven, eight, and nine are a repeat of that. And then 10 is a point. So it kind of begins and ends with a point. And you have 11 dimensions, nine of which are sort of the physical space that we live in. So the fifth dimension is interesting because if you were to step above the fourth dimension, you can imagine that you're looking down on all of time as a giant picture or a map in front of you, okay? It would, it would time itself would look no different than you reading text off of a sheet of paper, okay? So how many people here have seen the movie Interstellar. Right. Movie. It is a fantastic movie because it gets so much right. Okay. The, uh, the, the, uh, the scene where they're flying up to the black hole and it's got that funny ring shape around it. That's real. Um, the the uh, math was done by a guy named Kip Thorne. He's a, a just phenomenal astrophysicist and they spent 800 hours per frame of video rendering that black hole okay very cool that actually produced a whole scientific paper from kip thorne because no one had ever actually bothered to render what a black hole would look like okay so what you see in that movie is up until the moment that Matthew McConaughey's character enters the black hole is real. That is stuff that we can prove today with math and telescope observations, right? This is this is something we can do. So there's a funny thing about black holes. They're kind of a giant interstellar hole punch. Um, okay. A gravity operates throughout all of these 10 dimensions that we talk about in string theory. And one of the vibrational states, base states of string theory is called a graviton. Okay. And gravitons are waves in quantum mechanics. They would be called a wave function. But the wave, when the, the quantum mechanics, and it, it sort of, it, it talks about, at least in our dimensions, as collapsing the wave function into a, a real state. That's when you observe something. Now, I want to stress here that everything I'm talking about is theoretical. It's math, okay? We can't prove that this is actually what's going on. We think this might be an explanation of what's going on. But the cool thing about black holes is they represent kind of this uh, magic number in the math, if you will. OK, if I put a black hole in the math, the math can go everywhere. And inside a black hole, it is theorized that we could. Uh, yeah, yes, she, you know, the, there's no actually good physics explanations for the n-dimensional stuff. It is the, the math is elegant, but the, the practical applications are messy. Very, very standard human stuff. Um, so, uh, right. Um, so as you're moving through 
space time, if you encounter a black hole in space time, it looks like a hole. It, it looks like there, there's a hole punch where, so like our star, if if you were to look at it, it would be like putting a stretching out a sheet of uh, like like a bed sheet, and then you put a bowling ball in the middle, and there's that kind of dip in the middle, right? Well, a black hole it just looks like the bowling ball fell through the sheet. Okay, so what Interstellar does, and I don't hate it, but we can't we we don't know what happens inside of a black hole, and and the movie makes a fairly good effort of trying to say, look, we don't know what happens inside a black hole. We need somebody to go inside the black hole and get the information out about what happens inside a black hole. That's actually, you know, that's like one of the plot points of the movie. But when he's inside the black hole and you've got that scene with him, you know, pushing the books out from behind the, mm -hmm. the screen and they show these kind of string like things. They're trying to show this concept of string theory and he's he's moving the gravitons right by pushing the strings. Right. And. In theory, in in quantum theory, if you could somehow physically access this base state of reality, you could change reality. You could edit reality. Okay, you could make things appear. You could make things disappear. You could change gravity. You could, you know, you you could you could change people's minds about things. It, there, there's fascinating philosophical questions as to free the concept of free will here. Um, and some science fiction has actually dealt with those, you know, like, what does it mean if you could access and, and start editing the, the base state of reality? But here's the problem. It takes a black hole to do this. OK, in order to get into higher dimensions from our plane of existence, if you will, I need a black hole and it can't just be any black hole. The reason why it had to be Gargantua in the movie is because you need what's called a supermassive black hole. So your unless your brain is sitting on Gargantua, okay, you don't have access to the base state of reality. Okay. I it, I hate to say it, but it, it's uh, the only thing that, that really you have access to is a black hole sized ego. <laughs> That's probably what is happening because it, it, he's not the only one. I saw a lot of uh, yoga teachers, especially online on social media. They're talking about quantum physics, whatever they can't explain. They just like, oh, this is quantum physics. This is how your brain works. So have you actually bothered to read the books about uh, brain cognition and uh, like basic biology? Uh, no, but they want to appear as if they know what they're talking about. I think that's one of the reasons why like quantum physics is so popular for such things is it's like, yeah, if you don't have the tools to like, actually prove it you know outside of just like kind of like theoretical hypotheses um no one can really say that you're wrong and so i think that's part of like the appeal to like everyone because it's yeah it's like a free-for-all like in some ways everyone's equally ignorant because no one has the proper tools oh but. yeah no, but, but i think that's exactly what it is it's we want to believe that we can alter our reality just by willing it because if because if i don't actually have to get off my sorry butt and do something if all i have to do is just sit here and think good thoughts mm -hmm. right then i can say that i'm a good person that i'm helping right but you're not Unfortunately, at this plane of existence, you have to get off your butt and do something. Yeah, this is where I'm having a serious problem because they say, yeah, just sit and contemplate and meditate and think good thoughts and therefore good things will happen to you. And uh, this kind of message is all over. Uh, it's not just uh, in fitness, but everywhere we see some spirituality gurus are saying this to people. It's just so wrong because without you doing it, you are not going to achieve anything. And uh, it's like the easy 
shortcut. People are looking for an easy solution, uh, a confirmation bias to what they already know. And they don't want to challenge themselves. And the frustrating part is that uh, even the spirituality gurus, yoga teachers and meditation uh, teachers, they don't want to know more about quantum physics, what they're actually talking about to people. Go educate yourself. Nobody is really watching this seminar aside from the notes. I mean, <laughs> good for you guys. You will know some, you will learn some things. You will challenge your message. But uh, let's be honest, I was inviting more people to show up and uh, only a few people are here. Well, I'm not are you telling me that quantum mechanics is not red meat? <laughs> um, sorry, no, it's, it's not. It's this is this is hyper nerdy stuff, um, and honestly, as as I mean, Sam knows me; he knows that I'm I'm into this kind of nerdy stuff. But uh, this is really one of those places where it is very easy for people to get tripped up into thinking that they understand what's going on. I guess you could call it red it red meat from the okay people. This ain't it, you know. Like move on, find something else, and. I mean, they, we know they will find something else, right? We know. But my, my, the, I think one of the problems that the physicists have is they just kind of go, oh, whatever, those people who don't know what they're, you know, they just don't know what they're talking about. We're, we'll just be over here doing physics, right? Mm -hmm, That's just mm -hmm. what we're going to do. And they ignore us mm -hmm. here. And my thing is, no, because this is a giant cop-out. This is a way of saying, well, I don't actually have to do anything, so I'm not going to, right? Because I already did the thing that I need to do. I have good vibrations. That's all I need to do. 